Ah, Paris, city of lights and love, beauty and art. Good morning, everyone. Bonjour de Paris. We made it back to the city of lights from Disneyland Paris. The strikes aren't too bad. I haven't seen too many protesters. But the situation has kept us somewhat in center Paris here. And what do you do when you have an extra day in Paris? Why, you look at the art, of course. Now, the first thing that comes to mind when you think of Paris and art is, of course, the Louvre. One of, if not the largest art museum in the world. But I have visited the Louvre every time I've come to Paris so far. So as much as I love the Mona Lisa, who's right up there somewhere. I think today we're gonna check out some of Paris's other amazing art treasures at a place I've never been to before, but have always wanted to go. Le Musée d'Orsay, or the Dorsay Museum, which although much smaller than the Louvre, but then again, what is it? Contains the world's largest collection of impressionist and post-impressionist art. Like I said, a lot smaller than the Louvre, but look at the size of this place. If I'm not mistaken, the reason the building is so massive is that it's a converted rail Railroad station. I'm very excited about this one. This is where they got all the Monet and Degas and I believe even some Van Gogh. Some of the most famous paintings in the world are in here. And I can't wait to check them out. You ready to see some sick art? Yes. Let's do it. Oh, wow. This place is huge. Oh, I see someone I recognize already. It's the Statue of Liberty by the original artist. That's amazing. I wasn't expecting that. I didn't know we were going to see sculptures. Well, wow, look at this guy. He really loves his bird. Up. Huh? Good old Napoleon over here. Wow. Why is it that sculptors like to work so much in the nid? I mean, not that I'm complaining. I just feel like if I made a sculpture and showed it to my friends, the first question they'd ask is, uh, where are the pants? Wow. It is really impressive in here. But I came to see some paintings. And here they are, all hidden along the sides. Oh, wow. Most of these paintings are by artists I've never even heard of. And some of them seem to have a little bit of a fantasy element to them. Uh-oh. Look at this lady. She's smoking a cigarette. I guess that was before the Surgeon General's warning. Hey, look at this one. It's young Luke Skywalker. Hmm. I don't know what's going on in this painting right here. Is that head growing out of that weird board or is it a severed head on a board? Oh, wait a minute. I get it. It's symbolism. Here we have some Gustave Moreau paintings and I just noticed he paints a lot of people laying down. See kind of a theme going here. Look at this lady's trying to lay down on a cow. It's not working too well. It's interesting because some of the paintings in here are very realistic. Look at this lady looking up at Le Balloon. Others, however, are much more uh, blobby. That looks like some of my paintings. Only mine don't look like that on purpose. Ah, uh, here's a man dreaming of three floating ladies. <laughs> How French. Ah, uh, okay, here we go. I'm starting to see things become more visibly impressionistic over here. I'm not an art expert, so I apologize if I butcher some of these names. Looks like this is Pierre Bonnard, and I think this one's by Edouard Viard. One thing's for sure is these are all very hard to pronounce. Wow, it's amazing how big these paintings are. Totally different than looking at them in those little art books. All right, as much as I want to look at every painting down here, because many of them are uh, quite stunning, I kind of forgot that we're a little little short on time today. So the trout and Jon Snow with dog and all the other great stuff down here is going to have to be saved for another day because we're going up to see Monet. Oh my gosh. So many stairs. Oh, what the heck? Why didn't they start these from the ground floor? Oh, you see what they did here? They put the most popular stuff all the way at the top. It's like how the grocery stores put all the milk all the way at the back. So you have to walk by and look at all the products you don't want. That's how they get you, Allie. I don't want to look at the trout painting all day, even though it was pretty beautiful. Ah, uh, les fish. I want to see the famous impressionists. Okay. Finally. Cezanne, Degas, Manet, Monet, Bissarro, Renoir. All the stuff I came to see. Oh, wow. Look at this cafe. It's all behind the clock face. Wow, what a view. I was not expecting that. Ah, okay. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Look at that. These paintings, so colorful. They seem so vibrant and happy. Very different than the kind of paintings you'd find in the Louvre, you know, the old school stuff. Wow, they can even make these deaths look bright and happy. A street in Paris, May 1871. I don't know what was going on then, but it looks bad. Okay, I see a lot more people clustering this way. Ooh, and no wonder. Look at all these paintings by Paul Cezanne. That's crazy. Oh, and hey, there's old Paulie himself. Hey, Paulie. Oh, wow, look at this Paulie. All these neighbors with Pierre. Pierre Renoir, that is. Definitely a weird thing to see so many world famous paintings in such a small space. And this is just the beginning. Because check it out, it's cool. 
Claude Monet. Okay, this is nuts. The water lily pond paintings. That whole series of the Grand Cathedral. The Houses of Parliament. Even one of the haystacks. It is really weird to be standing in a room with all these paintings I've been staring at since I was nine years old and was in Miss St. Clair's fourth grade class learning about the genius of Claude Monet and the amazing way he learned to capture light with just little paint dabs. I mean, from far away, they look so crisp and sharp and detailed. But then you get up close and it's all kinds of little dabs and blobs and squiggles and weird brush strokes. Instead of it being a picture perfect with clarity, he was able to capture the impression of the place. Thus, Impressionism. See? I did not like Miss St. Clair very much. And I'm a hundred percent sure she didn't like me. But I did like learning about art. And she was obsessed. Wow, look at this. Renoir, Monet, Paul Gauguin. This is out of control. So many paintings I recognize from art books. But this is all just small potatoes so far. Because look at the size of some of these big boys. Wow, le dang. How do you paint something like that? Like, do you lay it down on the floor? Floor? Do you get a big ladder? I mean, what the heck? And you'd have to stand pretty far back to check on it and make sure you were doing a good job. I mean, that's amazing how simple and basic looking those brush strokes are. Looks like a kindergartner painted it. But then you back up. And voila! A masterpiece. That will never stop blowing my mind. Ooh, looks like we get a little break from paintings in the next room. Whoa! It's the other clock! Oh, wow. And we can get a much closer look at this view. Oh, dang. That is rad. Okay, we really start to have to book in it through this museum. Because there's another very famous piece of art in Paris I'd like to see today that's not in this museum. And the next place closes pretty early. So I'm trying to soak in as much Degas as I can and hoping that all these paintings can make an impression impression on me rather quickly because we have got to go man i could spend hours just on this floor because not only do they have all these paintings by renoir and monet but if we head back this way past the cafeteria again supposedly they have the post impressionist section with works by none other than vincent van gogh tied with monk he's probably my favorite painter of all time so i'm so excited to wait a minute wait a minute what about Vincent Van Gogh? We can't Vincent Van stop! Oh no! They're short staffed because of the strikes! No Van Gogh! No Van Gogh! Vincent Van No! Dang it. I mean, I love seeing the Monet and stuff like that. But Allie and I were both so excited to see the Van Gogh. Or I know, I know. Technically Van Gogh. Or Van Gogh. <laughs> it's gonna make me Van Gogh. Tied with Monk, I think he's probably one of my favorite painters on Earth. Oh, well. See, the problem with these strikes is that most people in France take the trains. And since the trains are the biggest part of the strike, lots of people can't get to work. So lots of places are short-staffed. Short hours. Cutbacks on which areas of different museums and tourist attractions are open. It's been a very weird trip. I am pretty darn bummed about not seeing Van Gogh, but you know what? We may not be able to control these circumstances, but we can control our reaction. So instead of focusing on the negative, we're going to focus instead on getting to our next destination, where hopefully we don't run into a similar problem. Because like I said, there's another very famous piece of art I want to see today. Oh man, look at this. Well, at least we got to see him in the gift shop. All right, no more procrastinating. Time to sortie. Yeah, that was a little bit of a bummer, just because I've never got to see a Van Gogh in person. But we'll see one one day, and let's not forget, we're still in one of the most beautiful cities in the world. Weirdly, when I think of Paris, the first thing I think of is Les Miserables. But as soon as I get here, every time, the lyrics go right out of my brain. Whoa, soup, sushi. Bizarre. Inspector Clouseau. <gasps> so strange to see the way they have to set up their little Christmas tree lots here. Gotta be pretty convenient, though, if you live right up there. You wouldn't have to carry it very far at all. Look at that little building right there. That's totally where the French Ghostbusters were. And right here is the YSL building. What is YSL again? They have cute purses. And a big Christmas tree back there. The bad thing about the strikes is some of the closures. You know, Versailles was closed. And we weren't able to go to the catacombs this time. No Van Gogh, but the good thing is... I've been looking around all day. And so far, I haven't seen any yellow vest protesters or smelled any tear gas. And if you've ever caught a whiff of that stuff, you know that's a serious bonus. Wow, normally you don't see this many cars on the side streets in Paris. But when there's no trains... People have to find a way. All right, we're almost there. Before we went to Disneyland Paris, when we were walking 
walking through the city the other day. We came right past this place. It was closed then, but judging from the people walking around inside, today's our lucky day. We can finally check out the Musee Rodin. The Rodin Museum. Boy, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I've always heard it pronounced Rodin. But then again, you never can tell with French. Now, Rodin, of course, is one of the world's most famous sculptors. And apparently when he died, he left all of his stuff to the French state. So they got this 18th century mansion here to house the museum. Now, inside the museum proper, they've got all kinds of his paintings and little sculptures, including this one that looks like Jean-Luc Picard. Wow, it's full of amazing stuff in here. And if the artwork wasn't enough, the house would be impressive by itself. Whoa. <laughs> Ooh la la. Very nice. Man, look at how much work this guy did. But out of all the sculptures that are here and all the work he did in his lifetime, arguably his most famous piece is the thinker, a small version of which is inside the house. But come on, no one comes here to take a selfie with the small version. So as impressive as all the stuff is inside of the house, we're gonna head on outside. Oh yeah, now this is more like it. Maybe it's just because I'm an American. But the bigger the sculpture, the more impressed I am. Now I've got to admit to you that I don't know much about sculpture in general. Or about these sculptures in particular. But that's why museums like this are so cool, you know? Even if you just come check them out on a whim. Sometimes it inspires you to do a little more reading and learning later on. Okay, now this one is familiar. I believe it's known as the Gates of Hell. Inspired, of course, by Dante's Inferno. And if I'm not mistaken, originally meant to be the entryway to some kind of museum. The details are all a little bit foggy to me now. But speaking of details, look at this thing. Look at all these people suffering and in torment, having a horrible time. Doesn't look like a very inviting doorway. But then up at the top, all by himself in the middle, it's the thinker. He doesn't look bothered. Eh, maybe he'll be bothered later. He'll think it over. Well, I guess I knew a little more than I thought I did. Wow, this place is way bigger once you're inside the walls than you think it's gonna be. It's like that all over Paris. From the street, you just see these walls or these facades that look like the main buildings. But then through those giant doorways are all kinds of secret treasures and gardens and whatnot. Now, I've seen a million pictures of the giant version of the thinker in this garden somewhere. So I'm determined to find it. Let's see. Think, think, think. Think. If I was trying to find a quiet spot to get away from everyone and do some pondering, where would I go? Excuse me, Mr. Rabbit, Mr. French Rabbit there. Oh, sorry. I don't mean to disturb you. Uh, see who play uh, Giant Thinker? No? Okay, hop, hop, hippity hop. He's more into hip hop than statues. Boy, he really liked to sculpt people with neck problems. Hey, I would have been the perfect model. Man. I can't find the darn thinker anywhere. I found the painter though. Look at this guy. Wait a minute. He's got a palette, but no brush. Is he the painter? Or is he the poser? Man, this must be one nice looking place in the summer. I mean, look at that beautiful garden over here. You got a great view of Napoleon's tomb across the street at Envelide. C'est bon. Wait a minute. Is that it? I think I see it. Yeah, through those trees. It was right up next to the house the whole time. In the one spot we didn't look, of course. Oh, wow. Behold. The full-size version of the thinker. Wow, pretty cool setup in here. Look at that guy. One of the most famous statues in the world. Seriously, when I think statue or sculpture, I think of Michelangelo's David and this. Wow, that is impressive. I mean, we're looking at the the thinker. Or le penseur, as the French would have it. But then again, not really. The original model was small and made for the gates of hell that we saw earlier. This is one of 28 giant-sized thinker castings scattered around the world. But hey, it's the only giant one at the Rodin Museum. So I'm gonna go ahead and say this is the thinker. Man, if the original model was sculpted in 1880, that means this guy's been thinking for a while. By now, he's either the wisest man in the world, or he's just really slow and we'll never know which because he can't talk hey i can talk i'm just trying to think of something to say this is weird i like how they put this little bench here so you can sit down and think about the thinker or maybe we sit here so he can think about us good point oh very good point he's looking right at us he's thinking about us that is so thoughtful of him i mean on the gates of hell maybe he was thinking about his sins or something but as a solo piece he could be thinking about anything world peace politics religion the mysteries of the universe what it is women want but if you uh want my opinion monsieur thinker sir you should think about getting some clothes i don't know how i never noticed this before but he's been doing all his thinking in the 
noon. Not that you'd know from looking at the front of him. They should call him the shrinker, huh? All right, well, nothing to do but get a couple of fun picks. And then I think it's time to head out. Real quick, though, we didn't really look upstairs. I don't know, probably just some more sculpted butts. But you never know. It's worth a look. Well, yes, there are quite a few more derrieres upstairs. Not that there's anything wrong with that. It is art, after all. But look at this. Do you know what this is? After all that, it's an original fan. Go painting. Wow, this is a weird one. I've never seen this one before. Look at all the detail up close. His use of color was amazing. And you can really see all the inspiration he took from Japanese prints. He was a huge fan of art from Japan. And look over here. They've got another Monet. Well, well, well. This is just our day for Monet. Unbelievable. Leaveable. Looks like we got our Van Gogh after all. And you know what that means? It means we can Van Gogh and get ourselves an Uber. That was a pleasant stop. I had no idea what we were going to actually do today. Since we had to come back from Disneyland Paris to the main city because of all the transportation strikes and whatnot. Other than what we're about to do now. Because all of this thinking has made me really hungry. So we're going to hop in an Uber and head across town. Because for the first time ever in Paris, we found an all, and I mean completely gluten-free restaurant. An Italian restaurant, no less. Little Nona, finally, I get to say Bon Appetit. They're short on English here, but you know what? Since the whole menu's gluten-free, you can't go wrong. Look at that beautiful gluten-free pizza. I feel like Kevin McAllister. A whole pizza just for me. Oh yeah, and for you, I guess. I did it. I finally did it. I found decent gluten-free celiac safe food in Paris. All right, well, we only have one thing left to do. But it's possibly the most important thing we've done all day. We have to brave the dangers of the French grocery store, which also weirdly has men's clothing in it as well. Whoa, and everything else. Aw, look at the kids' books over here about the little donkeys. Wait, don't get distracted. This is what we need right here. Oh my gosh. In France, Duracell is the one that has the bunny. And Energizer just has this creepy bodybuilding mascot. We. Weird. Anyway, now that we have the batteries, <laughs> Mon Cherry, I get it, I get it. Uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, we can complete our mission. And then we can finally go home to the United States. Okay, here we go. Twerking Santa lives! The song is way different than I remember, but the derriere is beyond compare. Santa has now twerked on the Champs-Elysees. And you know what that means? It means we've done our duty. We can finally go home and sleep well. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh no! What if this had all the answers? God is. God is. God is what? The mystery continues. You know who ripped that off? The douchemen. Ah, le chips, le condiments, le doudou. I hope I get the promotion. Man, this guy was a great sculptor. I just have one question though. Why does this lady have a tail? Bizarre.